This is a fan project. It was made for entertainment purposes only. It is not endorsed by or associated with Sony, Naughty Dog, or any of their affiliated companies. It is not for sale, distribution, or online monetization. All characters and associated names and references are copyright and trademark of their respective holders. Based on the characters and universe created by Sony Entertainment and Naughty Dog, we bring you Uncharted, The Hidden Kingdom, Part 1. On a lonely sword leaned he, like Arthur on Excalibur, in the battle by the sea, G. K. Chesterton. on top of the coordinates. The sun's coming up and all I see is ocean. Uh, what do you think, Elena? I don't see anything either, but... But what? I don't know. I, I feel... Wait, do you hear that? Kill the motor, Sully. Sounds like... waves. But there's nothing here. Okay, I felt that. Me too. Where's that spray coming from? Can someone please explain how the boat's bouncing around when there's not a single wave in sight? Oh, oh, ah! Ah! What the heck was that? Feels like you've run aground. On what? There's nothing here! He's right. The ocean's as flat as my walk after a long night in Havana. No, 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 no! Ah! Oh! Hey, you're reading me? I read you. Maybe keep your voice down so no one thinks you got a bug in your ear. You know what I hate about fancy dinner parties? That you never get invited to any? Yeah. Uh, I, I can't believe your fake invite got me through the gate. It wasn't a fake. You said you knew Faitbridge. You didn't say you were friends. Yeah. A guy like Faitbridge doesn't have friends. Stay focused. Relax. I'm through the service entrance. Just nod and act like you belong there. Hello! Hey, hi. How you doing? Yeah, nice hairnet. Yeah, it really ties the whole look together. Oh, hey, smells good. Barley almond soup. Yeah, keeps the body healthy. Stop fooling around. Mmm, delicious. Yeah, keep up the good work. Get serious, kid. Favorite is dangerous. Yeah, so you keep telling me. Uh, how dangerous? Well, let's just say he has a medieval way of looking at things. Was that supposed to be an answer? I'm in the East Hallway. Remember, the guards... Are on a rotation, I know. So far, so good. I'm at the door of the office. An electronic lock, just like you said. Well, let's hope your gizmo works. Considering what it cost me, it better. <laughs> I'm in. Ed, you're sure you disabled the alarm system? You hear any alarms going off? Well, if you're gonna get rhetorical. Remember, we need the map. Yeah, and the scans. I know. Going downstairs. I'm at the second door. That oh, sounds thick. Six inches. Steel core. Ha 
<laughs> I gotta get me one of these. Well, after this job, you can afford two. It's cold. Yeah, room's temperature controlled. Whoa. Huh, I feel like I was just transported to the Smithsonian. Armor, shields, broadswords, it... Here's an illuminated manuscript. It's a dead ringer for the Book of Kells. Uh, Helena would love this. It is the Book of Kells. The one in Ireland's a copy. How do you know? Uh, I helped Faber steal it. She'll feel kind of bad about that one. So, they asked me to help out with another little history project. You decided to double-cross it. Yeah, what can I say? I never liked the guy. Man, these paintings and tapestries. Besides, the idea of a guy like Fabridge holding Excalibur really chaps whoa, my... Whoa, 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 Holding what now? You said that the map in the scans would lead us to priceless Arthurian artifacts. A uh, sword's an artifact. The sword in the stone, Excalibur. The lady in the lake, Excalibur. The once and future king, Excalibur. That Excalibur? No. The Excalibur that Melvin the manager bought at the Renaissance Fair for the dinner show at Medieval Times. That's not funny. I... All right, it's a little funny, but I can't believe you didn't tell me we were going after Excalibur. I was worried you might overreact. Guess I was wrong, huh? Okay, okay. Fair. I found the altar. There's a painting of two knights in a sword fight. That's Arthur and Mordred. A bunch of rusted coins, gem set of dagger, parchments, and... Ah, bingo. An old wooden box. That's what we're after, kid. Inside should be a steel cylinder and an envelope of x-rays. X-rays? You said scans. That's a made on some photo. <laughs> Technically, x-ray fluorescent scans. Scans of what? My colonoscopies. I'll tell you later. Run the clock. Let's go. Got the cylinder. Hmm. It's heavier than it looks. It's vacuum sealed. The map's inside. Now, careful, Pete. That map is about 1,500 years old. It looks like it. Oh. oh smells like it, too. Ah, oh, does the miraculously preserved document from the early Middle Ages offend your delicate sensibilities? Just grab the scans. Should be in an envelope. There's no envelope. What? Was there yesterday? We have the map. We don't need the scans. The map only tells you where the sword is. The scans tell you how to survive once you get there. We need the scans. Hold on. I got company. Mr. Favridge? Hey. No one... <laughs> what was that? Oh, the guard. Knocked him out with a cylinder. Get out of there, kid. Way out of you. Uh, I mean, these tall. On my way. Take you up at the south gate, enter the gravel drive. Through the kitchen and... Ta-da! Ah, all right, I'm outside. Heading to the south gate and... Uh-oh. Don't say uh-oh. I hate it when you say uh-oh. It's Faybridge. Don't let him see you. Just get out of there. I can't. He's talking to Elena. Wait, our Elena? What's she doing here? I don't know, but... Don't do anything stupid, kid. He'll think she was in on it. No, he won't. You and Elaine have been on and off for a while. Mostly off. I'm getting her out of here. Nate? 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 Hey, Elena. Uh, Mr. Faybridge, I presume. The notorious Nathan Drake. I don't remember inviting you to my... What? Where did you get that? Oh, this, uh, a f funny story. I was, I was hanging out in your office when... Nate, are you crazy? You know who that is? Hey, you, don't move. That's our cue. Let go of my hand. Go, go, go! Why are we running? What's going on? Almost to the street, Sully. Get back! Hey, Elena. You lift. There's one and there's... Get in, both of you. Get in! Ah, so, Elena, how have you been? What else did he take? Are you alright, Mr. Faberge? 
Your lip is bleeding. What else did he take? Actually, we were going to ask you, sir. None of us have been in this room before. The altar appears undisturbed, except for the missing cylinder. So they have the map. Are you the one who found him? Yes, sir. I was making my rounds when I noticed the office door slightly ajar. Let me rephrase. Are you the one who let him escape? Yes, sir. Hmm. Don't you think it's strange that a thief would leave a jewel dagger like this behind? Yes, sir. I must have surprised him as This time it's your shoulder. Fail me again and I'll cut out your heart. Understood? Yes, sir. Judgment administered. I feel better, don't you? Yes, sir. Finalize our preparations. I want to be in the air by midnight. Sir. I hadn't planned on leaving until next week, Mr. Drake. But you, that traitor Sully, and the unfortunate Miss Elena have forced my hand. Now judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. The Excalibur. That's what I say. Come on, Nate. Favorite is a collector and a philanthropist. He wanted to hire me to develop a six-part series retelling the King Arthur legend from Mordred's point of view. I turned him down. I mean, most historians now agree Arthur never existed. Wait. You don't believe in King Arthur? Hey, I go with the evidence. And that's what I told Favorite. But he was insistent. He wouldn't take no for... And hold, on, hold on. Where are we? This is an airfield. I'm not getting on a plane. Especially that one. Sully, why do all your planes look like props from a World War II movie? <laughs> ah, they're always out of World War I biplanes. I gotta take what I can get. Well, have a great flight. Give me the van keys. I'll take those. Hey! Listen, Elena. Keys, Nate. Leaving so soon, sweetheart. I was hoping us girls would have a chance to catch up. Chloe. Of course. What are you doing here? Sully said you needed backup on this one. <sighs> I keep telling you, Faye Bridge is dangerous. He's a collector, Sully. How many collectors you know go around with their own band of mercenaries? Trust me, Elena. I've done a couple jobs for Faybridge. He's Belloc, not Indiana. Now let's see the map, kid. Be careful, will you? That map is 1,500 years old. I know, Dad. Mm. Oh, where, where did you get this? This looks and feels authentic. Uh, Favorite has been looking for this map his whole life. His island, Wales, France, and England. Over here is the Celtic Sea. What's this tiny island? Chloe, did you bring those charts? Yeah, right here on my mobile. It's called Google Earth, old timer. The Isles of Scilly are here, about 25 miles out. After that, there's nothing but open sea. I'm sorry, but if Google can't find your island, it doesn't exist. There's some writing here, but it's too small. Huh, see? You're interested. You can't resist adventure any more than I can. I'm not getting on that plane, Nate. Uh, hold on. I got an idea. Now you're using a cell phone? First, we take a picture of the island. It's not taking a picture. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, got it. All right. Apply a little digital zoom. Yeah, what do you know? It looks like coordinates and a name. Oh boy. What's it say? Avalon. That island is Avalon? My King Arthur knowledge is a, a little rusty. Here's the condensed version. King Arthur had an affair with the sorceress Morgan. Later, their son Mordred tried to usurp Arthur. In the final battle, Arthur killed Mordred. But not before Mordred mortally wounded the king. In some of the legends, Morgan took Arthur to the island of Avalon where his wounds could be healed. In others, the king died and was buried on Avalon with his sword. 
Excalibur. Uh, let's see Google Earth again, Chloe. Okay. Looks like we fly to Plymouth here. Take the boat to the Isles of Scilly here. Refuel and head across the Celtic Sea to these coordinates. I figure we have an hour on Faybridge, maybe two. You don't really expect to find Avalon. <sighs> Let's go. I'll go start the plane. Nate! Come on, Avalon! Here you go. See you later. Avalon? Really, Nate? King Arthur Excalibur? The Excalibur? Yeah, drive safe. Oh, I'm gonna regret this. Wait up, I'm coming with you. <laughs> ah, that's my girl. Shut up. Look at them, Chloe. Sitting up there, pilot and co-pilot. Like a couple of boys pretending to be treasure hunters. Except these boys really are treasure hunters. And so are you, Elena. I'm a journalist. Yeah, a journalist who will go anywhere and will risk anything for a good story. It's not the same. <laughs> I swear, Nate wants to be doing this when he's Sully's age. Then you don't. I love my job. I'm good at what I do. I just think there are stages, you know? I want a family someday. I want a quieter life someday. Don't you think about that? Sure, but the way I see it, you can't have everything. Besides, in my line of work, planning for the future doesn't make a lot of sense. Nature should be with you, not me. <laughs> oh, darling, it was a fling, that's all. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was a nice fling. Spare me the details. <laughs> You sure? There was this one time in Mozambique where... <laughs> I'm just saying, give Nate a chance. He might surprise you. Hey girls, Sully brought pork rinds. Uh, then again... <laughs> Ah, nothing like a relaxing boat ride. You see, this is how I like adventures to go. Nice and easy. <sighs> Too easy. What's it on, Chloe? All the way from Plymouth to the Isles of Scilly with no sign of Faybridge? It's too easy. Well, that's the problem with being a double-crossing two-faced mercenary. It makes you cynical. <laughs> Love you too. While you're fueling up the boat, I'm gonna take a look around. You're wasting your time! Now, was that a wave or did you just give me the finger? Yeah, I'll let her look around, kid. It'd be stupid to underestimate Fingridge. He had a lot of people and equipment to pull together. So yeah, maybe we got lucky and picked up a day or two. But still. I feel like you're hiding something, Sully. <laughs> Elena, honey. I'm an open book. No, there's something you're not telling us about Fingridge. Yeah, turn some pages, Mr. Open Book. Uh, we faced dangerous people before. What's so special about Fingridge? Uh, over the years, I, uh... Helped him build up his collection. For a price, of course. Of course. Well, about a week ago, I helped him, uh, what's the word we're looking for? Acquire? Uh, attain. Borrow. Steal? Steal! Yeah, that's the one. I helped him steal a rare painting by the medieval artist Giotto de Bondone. Which painting? Arthur receives the Holy Spirit. Arthur kneels by a way. A white dove descends from heaven, and a hand rises out of the lake, on Excalibur. I saw that painting at the Louvre last year. Don't tell me. The one in the Louvre is a fake, too. Oh, Sully, I love that painting. What do you mean, too? This might not be the best time, and I know how much you love the Book of Kells. The Book of Kells is a fake? Oh, the copy is just as good, Elena. Most well, scholars can't even tell the difference. Sully! I... I made a pilgrimage to the Book of Kells when I was in college. Don't you guys have any respect for the sacred? Hey, don't paint me with the same brush. Unlike some people, I don't steal sacred stuff. Yeah, well, well what are you doing here now? 
Okay, so paint me with the same brush, just not so wide a brush. What are you talking about? I don't know. I just... Can we get back to Faybridge? Uh, please. Okay. Three days ago, Faybridge invites me to his mansion. Takes me downstairs to his, uh, Sanctum St. Paul. Shows me the painting, all framed and lit up. Turns out, the painting is a kind of, uh... Pally... Uh, Pallum... Uh, pallid... Pamphlet? Yeah. Because they had pamphlets in the Middle Ages. Palimpsest? Ah, hey, that's the one. Now you're just making words up. In the old days, parchment and canvas were made out of animal skins. But it was expensive, so sometimes they'd reuse the parchment by scraping the words off. It's called a palimpsest. With paintings, they just do a new painting over the old one. It was also a great way to hide information you didn't want just anyone to see. Bingo. So, Faybridge learns about the painting, has it scanned, and discovers a secret document that reveals the location of the map. Which was where, exactly? Oh, there's a little church in Cornwall, Wales. The church was built on the ruins of an old castle. The castle was built on a graveyard and... And the dish ran away with the spoon. We get it. <laughs> so, Faybridge gets them a which, I mean, I don't know, tells him how to find out. But that secret document revealed a lot more than the map's location. According to Faybridge, it was written by Morgan Le Fay herself. He starts telling me about how Morgan was this uh, powerful witch. Morgan was a sorceress and a scientist. She was ahead of her time. Well, she must have been a worker, too, because Arthur betrays Gwyneth to shack up with him. Nice. Well, one thing leads to another, and they have an illegitimate son, Mordred. Years later, Mordred tries to take over, and Arthur kills him in battle, but not before being mortally wounded himself. Mordred had three sons. So Bors kills one, so Lancelot kills another, but the middle son escapes. According to Faybridge, that bloodline continues to this day. Whoa, hold on. Faybridge thinks he's the direct descendant of Mordred? You've got to be kidding me. He thinks it's all real. Arthur, Morgan, Mordred, Avalon, the sword, all of it. Oh, crap. I thought we were going to take turns keeping watch. Actually, that was Chloe's idea. Well, well, well. If it isn't our little band of party crashers. Hands up, please. Come on, Faber, you're not going to shoot us in broad daylight. We're on an island on the edge of nowhere. I've already bribed the local authorities and your thieves. So yes, I'm going to shoot you in broad daylight. You know, favorite, you left out a few things about your documentary. Did I now? I couldn't figure out why you were so passionate about it. But now I understand. Mordred's side of the story is your side of the story. <laughs> Dear Elena, it pains me to see the company you've chosen. She wasn't part of this. I swear. <laughs> well, if you swear. Do you really believe you're the direct descendant of Mordred? It's not a belief, Elena. It's a fact. Mordred's blood runs in my veins. I have documents passed down generation to generation. I have artifacts collected across centuries. For over a thousand years, my ancestors have searched for the map. But only I was deemed worthy to find it. I'd say that more to do with modern technology than your worthiness. What would a thief for hire know about destiny? I was finally ready to fulfill my family's quest. Unfortunately, in my zeal, I made one mistake. I trusted Victor here. I assume the man who helped me steal the painting could help me steal the rest. And you were right, technically. Except you stole from me instead of for me. Well, you can't have everything. But I do have everything, Mr. Drake. I know how to get safely to Avalon. You don't. I know how to find Excalibur without getting wounded. You don't. And I know where Arthur lies entombed, waiting for the prophecy of his return to be fulfilled. Oh, a king will return from Avalon, but it won't be Arthur. I will play my destiny and change the course of the world. In fact, let's start with you three. Give me the map. I don't need it, of course. These past few days, I've stared so long at its cracked surface, I've memorized every detail. But the map belongs to my family. What? You guys really should watch your back. Chloe, I will never say another word about you being a double-crossing, two-faced mercenary. Aw, oh, you're too kind. 
guns down, boys. <clears throat> you shoot me and you're all dead. Ooh, I love an ultimatum. On three, shall we? You're bluffing. All we have to lose is our lives. You'll lose 1,500 years of destiny. One. Maybe we can negotiate. Two. All in favor of negotiating, raise your hand. Three. All right. Guns in the water. Do it. Your men look hot and sweaty, Faybridge. <sighs> Into the water, now. Start swimming, boys. Nice work, Chloe. Now, where are the scans, Faybridge? And by scans, he means the scans of the pally... Uh, palum... pallid... Palimpsest? Yeah, that's the one. You think I'd carry something so valuable around in my pocket? Ah, crap. Let's go. Your turn, Faybridge. Into the water. May I look into your eyes first? Well, you really weren't bluffing, were you? I could use a woman like you. Use being the operative word. I'll make you head of security. Seven-figure salary. And a place in the new order when I come into my power. Normally, I'd take that offer knowing I was just going to double-cross you. So I'm going to save us all a lot of trouble and count to three again. One, two... Until next time. We better get going. Oh, if we were really smart, we'd shoot him now. Yeah, we're not that smart. Thanks, Chloe. Hey, don't I get a hug? <laughs> For what? For letting them sneak up on us. Giving you the opportunity to be a hero. Stop wasting time, kid. Let's go. on top of the coordinates. The sun's coming up and all I see is ocean. Uh, what do you think, Elena? I don't see anything either, but... But what? Uh, I don't know. I, I feel... Wait, do you hear that? Kill the motor, Sully. Sounds like... waves. But there's nothing here. Okay, I felt that. Me too. Where's that spray coming from? Can someone please explain how the boat's bouncing around when there's not a single wave in sight? Oh, yeah! What the heck was that? Feels like he's running around. On what? There's nothing here! He's right. The ocean's as flat as my walk after a long night in Havana. No, 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 no! Ah! Oh! What? Look! Island! 
I could say it as soon as my feet touched the ground. Stop, Doc. Let's get out of these waves. This won't starfish. Here, here, use this to bandage Chloe's head. Ah, that's a nasty cut. Uh, Swallow Geller, too. <coughs> Chloe, are you okay? <coughs> what happened? We crashed, that's what happened. You went under, and Elena fished you out. Thanks. I guess we're even. We didn't just crash. We just crashed on Avalon. In some of the legends, Morgan used a spell to make the island invisible. An invisible island? I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> or, uh, not to see it, as the case may be. Look at the trees! The cliffs! It's beautiful! This island is impossible! Historically, it could be one of the most significant- I'm glad you're feeling like you're back at school, Elena, but we need to get practical. What do we do now? Well, without a boat, we either grow old and die here on Avalon, or wait for Feybridge to get here and kill us. Some treasure hunters you are. You have a better idea? We're on Avalon, people! Let's go find Excalibur! Okay, yeah, that's a better idea. Good one, Elena. Yeah, not bad. <sighs> Let's go. <laughs> What's so funny? I thought you didn't believe in King Arthur. Shut up! <laughs> You've been listening to Uncharted The Hidden Kingdom, a fan-made audio adventure. For more information about the project, visit us online at unchartedthk.com. That's unchartedthk.com. This audio drama was written by Chuck Duffy and directed by Jonathan Winstead. Music for this episode composed by Evan Boyerman. Sound design and foley by Jonathan Winstead. Production assistant, Sasha Bloor. Graphic design by Tommy Rood. Starring John Doyle as Nathan Drake, with Graham Rowett as Dorian Faybridge, Sandra Espinoza as Elena Fisher, Beth Davison as Chloe Fraser, and Ken Murdoch as Victor Sullivan, William English III as the security guard, and Sam Gore as our narrator. Produced by Jonathan Winstead. Special thanks to Miranda Ray, Laura K. Welsh, Oliver Ray, Kennedy Phillips, Eric Gibbs, and Mike Petty. We hope you enjoyed the first half of our audio drama. Wherever you're listening, please be sure to leave a review to let us know what you thought. We also invite you to join us next week for the second half and exciting conclusion to Uncharted, The Hidden Kingdom. On behalf of us all, thanks for listening.